Welcome, and thank you for listening to this episode of Leaps and Bounds. I'm your host, Tom Bash, and I'm thrilled to be bringing you conversations with some of the most successful CEOs, sales leaders, and home improvement professionals. When I started in this industry 20 years ago, tearing off roofs, I had no idea about what went into making a home improvement business successful. Now, having met with thousands of contractors, helping them adopt technology, and watching them grow, I'm excited to invite them on to share what's made them successful, what they're doing today to stay ahead of their competition, and the advice they have for others. On this episode, I'm joined by business owner, speaker, coach, and author, Kyle Hoffman. Kyle founded Roofing & More in 1993 with a mission to reinvent new ways and ideas to serve their customers better, to improve the lives of their employees, and to give back to those in their community. Together with a core of experienced employees, Kyle and his daughter Marie lead a team that is focused on making the home improvement experience enjoyable for customers while realizing their mission. Listen as we discussed his early start into roofing, the many triumphs and turbulations along the way, and the deep passion he has for helping others. Kyle also shares advice on how to maximize your existing leads, how to differentiate your company in a crowded space, and details the very specific cadence he uses in following up with customers and showing up for an appointment. I'm excited to have Kyle on, so let's get the show started. Hey, Kyle, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I'm really excited to to have you on here and for our listeners to get to hear from you. You've got a ton of good information that, that I've been able to hear, and, and I know you're putting out a lot of good uh, resources for our industry, so, you know, really appreciate that. Um you know, before we get started here, I wanted to give our audience, or wanted you to, to give our audience a little uh, background about who you are and how you how you got into the industry. Oh well, at my age, this could take a while. <laughs> <laughs> so, the older I get, the longer my story becomes, right? But um, so, you know, who I am today, I'm a very passionate person uh, who just gets up every day, energized and loving what I do. Um, more importantly, you know, really, really loving who I am. I've been married for 36 years uh, to my wife, Chris, and she's amazing. And without her, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be who I am or where I am or, or what I am. And then my daughter, Marie, uh, she actually runs the day-to-day business at the roofing company. And, um, you know, our relationship, she says that I am her business partner, her father, and her best friend. That's great. And so uh, I have uh, a bunch of grandchildren, and uh, that's really who I am today. Now, um, I wasn't always who I am today. I, I didn't always have the freedom that I have or um, get up full of joy every day, loving what I do. It wasn't always that way. It's kind of like, um, so back when I was 17 years old, I got a job carrying shingles like I think a lot of us contractors did. And you know, we, we were just looking for a job and somehow it was with a roofing company. And then, you know, for many of us, we climbed the ladder, no pun intended, right? <laughs> but we climbed the ladder as far as like, I went from a laborer to being a shingler to being a crew leader to being a supervisor. And, you know, the day came, um, originally from Buffalo, New York, this happened up in Buffalo. And I will tell you, those roofs up there, man, they are steep and close together, like a sidewalk's length apart. It was it was hard work, and it still is hard work. But in the 80s, we migrated to Northern Virginia. And uh, that's where, where we are today. And it's where we really built our lives and built our career. And the day came along, it was a Tuesday in 1993, and I, I actually went into town, got my business license, and decided that I was going to start my own business. There was a lot of talk before that with my wife and everything, but that was the day that we decided we're going to start our own business and full of dreams, um, excitement. Uh, I'm going to have freedom. I'm going to have piles of money. Uh, I'm going to have all these things that um, I really thought that I would have. But uh, somehow my American dream turned into a nightmare. <laughs> it wasn't, but a couple of few years later, and now I got payroll, Rob and Peter to pay Paul, and went around trying to figure out how to do this. See, I knew how to install shingles really, really, really good, but I didn't know anything about running a business. So 
fast forward uh, through many years of survival, uh, ups and downs, and I came to a place in my life, and there's a lot more to the story, but I came to a place in my life where we had been through the recession of 2008 and 2009, and I had to make a decision um, if I was going to keep going after 15 years in business. And um, I, I was upside down. I owed a lot of money. It just got too big for me. And fortunately, I, I met a couple of people uh, at, right after that, and I went and met with somebody, and this gentleman helped me decide if we could save my business. And um, and the answer was, we could save your business. But he asked me a question. He said, but only if your heart's in it. See, in, in 2007, my 17-year-old son, Kyle Jr., was killed in an automobile accident. And that really, um, needless to say, to put the, the passion, the zest, the desire, uh, the drive out of my life for a period. And then the recession hit right after that. And that was a recipe for me to end up in a, in a pretty bad place. Um, but the gentleman said, as long as your heart's in it, and he said, I know what you've been through, and we can save your business if your heart's in it. Fast forward about eight months a year, I went to an event, and I met this guy, and I was pretty discouraged trying to fix this mess that I created. And he looked at me, and he said, Kyle, what do you do for a living? And I said, I'm a roofer. And I looked down at the floor and I put a word in there that I don't use today. It started with an F. I said, I'm an F and roofer. And the guy looked at me and he said, look at me. And I looked up at him and he said, I want you to go home starting tomorrow morning. And I want you to look in the mirror every morning. I want you to say I'm a businessman that owns a construction company. And then I want you to do whatever it is you need to do that day to become more of a businessman that owns a construction company. I've been doing that now going on 11 years and it has changed my life and it's changed my business. And it's just amazing what a different perspective or a paradigm shift can do in your life. That's a really, you know, gripping story. I mean, you know, the, having the loss you did, it's, it had to be difficult, um, you know, to have a, a strong marriage. I mean, that, that's, that's powerful to have been married for 36 years. Um, you know, that, that, uh, is really powerful as well. And so that's a, it's a really, uh, I, I don't want to say, uh, common entry into the business of starting, you know, as a labor and then and progressing through and, and going through sort of the struggle and the journey. I, you know, uh, personally, I grew up in Western New York as well and got started tearing off, you know, five layer cedar roofs, uh, you know, in, in downtown. And I know it's, a uh, it's a it's a tough way to to make a living, um, and you start to progress it, and you know look at the at the ones telling you to bring up the bundles and the and the plywood, and and you're thinking you know, boy, if only I could learn how to do that, and uh, you do that, and then you're like, uh, you know, if only I could learn, uh, you know, if only I could get a crew and be the one that shows up here and drive does the drive by and you know checks on everything's good and, and continues on with their day, uh, you know, if I can learn to do that, and uh, you know I progressed that way, and. Uh, I think, like you said, a lot of folks do, and that's that's really how they get uh, get into the business. And then here, you, then you, then you find yourself running a, a roofing business, um, but not really knowing the business side of it. Uh, and so I think that's a really uh, good positive mindset to have to to change your way of thinking from you know saying uh, yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm a roofer, uh, but really recognizing that you are a business person running a, a construction company. I mean that is that is what you're doing. How did, you know, once you kind of uh, took that mantra and, and you know, uh, changed your frame of reference and, and your way of thinking, how did you go about actually uh, implementing that into your business? Well, it was definitely a journey. Uh, I like to say to people, it's a journey, not an event, you know, and somebody said that to me once. And for some personalities such as mine, it's so important to, to remember that. And it really began with um, taking a look at my business and figuring out what was broken uh, and working on fixing that area of my business. And we did it one step at a time or one brick at a time. We built it and and it, it um, sometimes seemed like a very painful process. But looking back on it, I wouldn't have had it any other way. Um, so for an example, uh, if, you know, getting into... Um, 
the freedom that I have today. The only way that I could have the freedom that I have today is by having a team of people that operate the day-to-day business at the roofing company, a sales manager, an operations manager, a CFO, a leadership team. And how do you, how do you do that in, in construction? Like I said, I was a roofer, right? So uh, I don't, I haven't met many roofers, Tom, that know how to do interviews or that really understand what a good interview looks like or how to read a resume or how to write write a a good ad to attract the right people for the position that you're trying to fill. And for years, I had the wrong people in the wrong positions because it was like, you showed up, you seem like a nice guy, you seem like a nice lady. I think you can do the job. Mm -hmm. I believe in you. And it was a lot of feelings and not about facts. So when I started studying these things, for an example, when I knew I needed to build a team I started studying. I'm talking to gurus, reading books. Like I'm a junkie for this stuff now. Um, I mean, I'm on my my elliptical for 70, 80, 90 minutes, listening to a podcast, listening to an audible book, you know, and just trying to learn more and more and more every day. And there's, you know, I just enjoy it so much today. But it was just a step at a time. That was a question about how do you implement? How did I implement this stuff into my business? I would say the first thing was I had to learn to understand the numbers. I think it's a mistake that a lot of us make. We don't really understand the numbers of our business. And that was the first thing I looked at was my numbers because I had gotten into big trouble and I had to make a plan and I had to really start understanding the numbers from a businessman's perspective instead of from a roofer's perspective. Big, big, big difference. Because if you grow a broken business, you just have a bigger broken business. Yeah, no, it's a great that's a great point. And and I guess, you know, I'd be remiss, you know, obviously your um uh you know, we, we can talk certainly about uh you know roofing and more and, and you know uh being a president owner there, but I'd also uh, be remiss if I didn't mention you. You I, I believe you took this information and wanted to help others and created uh um an academy or, or coaching to help others. I mean, what, what was it that made you want to um, decide that, hey, all this information I'm gathering would be really beneficial to, and, and all the lessons you've learned, right? What what was it that made you decide that it'd be really valuable to share this with the industry and, and help others, uh, you know, achieve success? That was it, the, the main people were people in my life. Um, I would get comments from people, but the whole coaching and the uh, academy, uh, the name of that business is Kyle Hoffman LLC. And um, that happened accidentally, believe it or not. So I had ran an appointment one evening. One of my salespeople were sick, and this was quite, quite a long time ago. And I had ran an appointment to cover in for him. And I uh, we, we're a GAF master elite uh, contractor. So I, I went to this appointment and I did my presentation and, and um, there was a point in the presentation where, you know, we were more money and they said to add another bid from another master elite contractor. And, they, you know, they, um, the, the, I asked them to get the bid, let's take a look at it. And I, I wasn't pleased with what I saw. Like, you know, my, first of all, I want to say right now, Tom, disclaimer, I'm not saying I was right. I'm just saying this, <laughs> this, is, this is what happened. Yeah. So from my perspective, um, this other contractor uh, was not enough money, you know, per square to be considered a master of lead. And, and I was, yeah, I, so I sent my uh, rep a text and I said, um, if you're going to invite certain contractors into the elite program, we ought to rename it the master average contractor. And he texted me back and said, let's talk tomorrow. So I ended up calling him up and we had a talk and I told him what had happened. He said, this is what he said. He said, what do you think we should do about this? Meaning, meaning GAF, like, what do you think we should do about this? And I said, well, you should, you should bring people in to teach the contractors how to be businessmen and women. I know for a fact this contractor cannot be making profits at these numbers. He's going to end up like I I was, you know, in trouble because he didn't understand his numbers. And so, so you're helping the contractors by doing this. And 
kind of get tough on them. And he said, well, what would you, what would, what, what are some things you think we should teach them about the numbers? And I started running through <laughs> my checklist of stuff. And when I was all done, he said, you know what, you're right. And we're gonna, and I think we've found the person that we're going to ask to do it. For us. <laughs> and I went, Oh, really? Who? And he said, you dumb. <laughs> right. Look in the mirror. So yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, Whoa, 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 man. Wait a minute here, bud. Wait a minute. And, Anyway, that led to me being invited to do my first business planning uh, event, um, brought in a bunch of contractors and spoke to them, and I got such great feedback. My wife was there, and she encouraged me. She said, there's something to this. And she was like, I, I just, you were alive up there, you know? And I really was filled with something that's very hard to explain that I've never felt before, like this is where I belong. Um, and it felt so good to help people. And the more I did it, and then I started the one-on-one -on -one coaching, somebody asked me if I would help them. And I remember they called me up and I said, yeah, sure, I'll help you. And they said, how much are you going to charge? And I said, nothing. What are you talking about? And, and he said, no, I want you to charge me because if you charge me, you've got skin in the game. If I'm paying you, you're going to work harder for me because I really want to change my business. And that was the beginning of me, uh, you know, having setting a fee for coaching sessions and, and I've seen uh, good results. Now, the results, I, I want to make it clear, Tom, the results, they're not me. The results are the people that I coach. I'm just sharing information. I'm just getting them thinking. I'm just challenging them with the right questions. They're the ones that implement it and do it and make a difference in their lives. I'm just kind of hanging out on the sideline like a coach does. Yeah, that's 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 an excellent point. Uh, you know, they have to they have to want to change too. I imagine to to be successful and to see themselves in that light. Um, I know you've got a, a ton of great uh, you know courses and stuff that you that you uh, talk to your people about, but I'd love to understand a little bit more about um, you know how do you change that mindset. Uh, from you know being a roofer to being a business owner it's hard um i can only speak for myself so one of the things that turning into a businessman who owns a construction company led to was personality profiling um and we we do the disc personality profile sure. and i started to study that and you know who the first person i profiled was was myself <laughs> And I remember reading this very in-depth thorough report and I went home and I, 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 I like dropped it on the counter and I looked at my wife and I said, this thing knows me better than I know myself. And there was some big pills along this journey to swallow, but I was the main person holding my company back and I never knew it. I never, so You see the same things that got me to a certain place in my business so I'm a, I'm a 97B on the disc. So I, I, I'm a very determined individual. I'm a bulldozer. If I set out to do something, most likely it's going to get done. It's going to happen. I'll leave a mark while I do it, but it'll happen. So, so I'm also a very high I. So I love people, love to be around people, love to speak, love to share. I'm an extrovert. My S is very low and my C is about midline, just below midline on the, on the chart. So anybody that knows what the disc is, you you'd be uh, tracking with this. But because I'm such a determined individual, I was able to get my business to that point where I was ready to lose everything, right? But that same determination that helped make me successful to a point is the same determination that will eventually stop me from achieving my next level of success. You get where I'm coming from it? This is big. I mean, when I realized this about myself, uh, it was one of the biggest pills I've ever choked down. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it was so necessary. I'm so thankful I have a coach. I, I don't just say this stuff. I live it. I have a coach in both my businesses. And I also have another gentleman I know that's a life coach. And my coach and this life coach called me up for coffee one day, and I thought we were meeting to talk about one of our employees at the roofing company. Well, it turns out they wanted to talk about me. And they said, there's need to be some changes made in your leadership. 
in your management style, how you talk to people, how you come across. And man, I remember at first I was like, do you know who you're talking to here? <laughs> you know, but, yep. but like once I realized uh, that it, it was, it was me that had to change. And when I started changing it miraculously, a whole lot of things around me uh, suddenly started to change. It was, it's crazy how it worked. Yeah, it's really, uh, it's, it's, it really, it really is impactful when you start to look kind of, uh, at yourself in, in that sort of light and, and, uh, uh, you know, finding out what needs to change and, and realizing that, that it's you, <laughs> uh, it takes a lot to, to do that. Um, uh, I want to shift focus just a little bit here on, uh, you know, giving our listeners some actionable items that they can take away from this, that maybe it can help them in their, in their, uh, businesses today. And, and, you know, one of the things I hear from contractors about, um, is, is on the lead side of, of the business. And, uh, you know, I get a lot of customer or a lot of contractors that say, uh, you know, that they, they want more leads because they can, you know, they've got these metrics in place, um, and they want to know how to get more leads. And then on the flip side of that, there's a lot of lead generation companies out there today, uh, that are pumping out leads. Uh, I'd love to kind of get your take on, you know, uh, lead setting, tracking, all of that. Yeah, well, one of the, I want to go back some years ago to a conversation I had with a gentleman. And the focus was before you work on getting more leads, stop and do more with the leads you already have. And really dig in. I I like to call it doing audit in this area of your business. So in the leads area of our business, we, we did an audit. And it's like, how many leads are really coming in? How many of those leads are we really capitalizing on? How many of them are slipping through the cracks and getting away from us for different reasons? Maybe we're not getting back to them fast enough. Maybe we're booked out too far and they don't want to wait. So they they might schedule an appointment first, but then they cancel it later. But paying attention to the very, um, the small details within the process and what we do. And that's the first thing we did was let's do more with the leads we already have. And then once we mastered that, then we said, all right, now we can handle more leads and we're not just going to waste them because I've met tons of contractors that they don't even realize it until we dig into it, but they look and they go, Oh my gosh, I didn't realize we were wasting so many leads. And there's, you know, each one of those leads costs whatever it is, $100, $200, $300, whatever it is, whatever your numbers are, uh, they are, but uh, it all matters. Yeah. What What are some ways that, that contractors can can maximize their the leads that they are getting? Well, one of the things that we did was we, and I, you know, I want everybody to know, I got all this stuff from people smarter than me, like hmm. Very little of what I'm, uh, what I shared, I actually created and invented. I, I wish I could say I did more, but um, there's a lot of very successful, smart people out there. But the, the one thing we did was whenever a web form, and you know, I went to an event uh, last February, right before COVID hit, in Atlantic City, and I remember I was in this room. And the, the guy teaching the, the class asked the question: "Is like when a lead comes into your company." how quickly do people get back to them? And I said, zero to 30 seconds. And he blew me off. Like he didn't even acknowledge somebody else like spoke up and said within a day. And, and, and I just kind of left that room going, all right, whatever. Um, but at our company, when a lead comes in, it's zero to 30 seconds. Like you're moving on it. Like we want people when they submit a, a, a web form or what, whether they come to another platform, you know, whatever it is. When they do that, we want them, we want to call them back so fast that they kind of go, it's like you, Tom, you're like, wow, I just, I just hit the button. That was fast. And we're like, yeah, isn't it great? Technology is great. And then there's a process for like when we call you back and you don't answer, we, we don't leave a message. And then we wait a certain amount of minutes. All right. We wait a certain amount of minutes and then we call you back again. And then if you don't answer again, we leave a voice once it's that time. Then if we don't hear from you within a certain amount of time, we send an email. Then we contact you again. We've essentially developed a 12-step process to where, you know, very few leads get left behind. So it's all about just digging into the detail and really thinking about how can we 
capture every opportunity possible. And you'll never get them all. You know what I mean? It's never going to be perfect, but you sure, I found we could do a whole lot better than we were doing. Yeah, that, that's um, that's really great. How, how do how do companies go about like when they and I'm not asking for you know step by step process, but like if a company is like, hey, that's that's really interesting. We we need to you know implement something like that in our business. Was this something that happened for you overnight, or was it a matter of trial and error, or was it uh, you know a period of time where you you've refined this uh, you know system? Yeah, so it's the last. It's a period of time where we refined it, um, and and you know here's the here's the cool thing I love about what I do today. When it comes, I love the roofing company, but when it comes to the coaching, I'm not a one size fits all uh, coach. Like I don't believe that only one sales system works or only one this works or one that. So we could give like this twelve step process. We have it in writing we could send that editable document to you or to another contractor that's listening to this podcast and they could probably make it better. And that's one of the things I do whenever I'm working with people, whether I give them, you know, whether they're, you know, paying me to coach or whether I just share a free document with them. Um, I tell them, the only thing I ask is when you make it better, send it back to me and show me what you did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so really. That, so that if you see something I didn't see, um, it can benefit me as well. So what we do is we have a 12-step process in writing. And it, it, you know, when you hear me say that, I don't want you to picture some <laughs> crazy top secret document. When you've seen it, Tom, you'd probably go, oh, okay. <laughs> but here's the thing. Most contractors don't even have that. They don't, they don't right. have a, a process. And so, therefore, it, it doesn't happen. It doesn't get done. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So, so once you know, let's say we we've we've got a solid lead. I want to talk a little bit about uh, some advice you have on the sales side of the business. And so, I guess you know, the first thing I'd ask you is, you know, being in such a fragmented industry with so many um, you know competitors, how do you go about differentiating yourself um, so that you're not you know left to compete on price? So um, I call it true differentiation. Um, and what I did was I came up with a bunch of questions um, that I asked that I asked the um, ourselves. And I actually do a, um, a class on this and, and we call it true differentiation. And so um, this is available. Like I have a uh, video it's a it's just less than an hour long, and it's actually a video that I can send people, and uh, it comes from Kyle's Coaching Toolboxes, and it's an hour, almost an hour of true differentiation and questions you ask and things you want to do to truly be different. Because one of the things I've learned is we all want to believe we're different, but in reality, we're not that much different to the customer. I mean, I might be a nice guy and another person might be a jerk or I might be a jerk and somebody else is nice and the customer might go, that guy's a jerk, so I'm not hiring him um, or her, you know, but we're not really as different as we like to believe we are. But, but when we can sit down and go through a list of questions and really start thinking about how we can truly be different, it, it's huge. Yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, you know, it it is a, um, I guess back to your earlier story, right? When you when you're running a lead and you're up against somebody who's who's at a lower price, you know, how do you how do you differentiate yourself and how do you add value, um, even if it's perceived value? But you know, how do you how do you differentiate there? So I think it's definitely important for for you know our listeners to to understand that. So I would encourage them uh, if they want to learn more to to certainly reach out to you. Uh, you know as we like progress through the sales process, what other components do you think of the sales process um, are, are folks in this industry missing? Well, the, the, the first and most obvious thing I think was um, asking questions. Um, most of us call it the needs assessment portion of your process, right? And it's, you know, developing a list of questions that you're going to ask the customer and ask the customer um, in a conversational approach. What's important to the customer is always what's important to us. 
And a lot of times in sales, let's just face it, our agenda is more important than the cost, what's important to the customer. And so you've heard it. We show up and puke all over the customer and want to tell them how amazing we are and all this stuff. I don't believe in that, that style. I, I believe that you ask questions. Now, you want to be different in the roofing business. Like, and, 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 and you're going to say, whoa, you know, whatever, maybe, but just show up on time. Like we train our people, if the appointment's at 10 a.m., show up at 9.50, park down the road, never drive past the house before your appointment time, park down the road at 9.50, get your clipboard, make sure you have everything ready. Pull up in front of the house at 9.59, exactly. And get out of your vehicle within 10 to 15, 17 seconds at the most. Don't be shuffling around looking for stuff, be prepared. Always park out front, walk up the driveway, up the sidewalk, knock on the door frame at exactly 10 a.m. And, and if timed right, this will automatically happen. And then step back two steps and turn to a 45 degree angle and wait for the customer to answer. And you'll be amazed how different that will make you because we get complimented all the time that we, we're, not, we're not a minute early, we're not a minute late, we're right on time. And that differentiates us. I mean, we're known for that. We get comments about that. And so that's just a simple thing that you can do to be different from anybody else. I don't know about you, but me and my wife, if we have somebody come into our house and they show up 12 minutes early, we don't really like that because we weren't ready maybe. Maybe it was a morning appointment and my wife's still getting dressed or whatever. So being on time makes a difference. Yeah, well, that's really uh, really detailed and, and uh, specific. And that's that's great. I think that's that can set you up for a lot of success. And I know if... I've heard you you speak a little bit more to like to the hiring side, and I, I think it's interesting. Maybe maybe you can tell this brief story, but I think it's interesting how uh, you go about you know basing your opinion on on whether whether or not to hire someone. You know, even just on how fast do they respond to your message. So I think that uh, uh, I'd be interested. Is that throughout your whole business? I mean, is it very detail oriented like that? Everything. Uh, that's what we're known for. Uh, we've got a few reviews where. People have actually commented and say they're like pilots and surgeons. They use checklists for everything. They're so precise. And it's, you know, it's, it just, it works uh, to differentiate yourself. And it makes for satisfied customers, satisfied teammates, uh, satisfied strategic business partners, because, you know, you're being proactive and you, you don't have as, as many messes to clean up as you do when you don't do these things. So, yeah, we train very, very specific salesperson at our organization. Um, they're going to get three months minimum, minimum of, I mean, training, you know, like we set them up for success. And, and I know a lot of contractors, I hear people tell me stories that they hire somebody and the first day they're out selling or the first two days or four days or whatever. Um, we've got a training manual that we follow with checklists and everything so we don't overlook important parts because I, I look at it as it's our responsibility to set you up for success if you're if you're working on our team. Um, your success is our success and it's our responsibility to make sure you're successful. Yeah, well, I, I wish I had uh, came and worked for you when I started uh, in the roofing business. I think I was given a clipboard and said, you know, go look for damage. And I said, what's damage? You know, <laughs> this was, this was uh, you know, back uh, when I was working some insurance storms, you know, and, and wind storms. It was, you know, go look for damage. Okay, I found damage. Now what? And, you know, just like uh, just flying by the seat of my pants on like what to do. And, you know, it took, I don't know, six months to a year to really understand, okay, you know, what am I doing? And, and what's the best practices here? And, and, you know, it really wasn't until much later on when I started reading, uh, you know, books like Gap Selling uh, from Keenan and just other sales books that, that really helped teach me uh, sort of the art of selling and, and, and the things behind it um, that made me, uh, you know, be much more successful at it. But, but I think this is something that, you know, I see a lot of successful companies in the industry doing and, you know, investing in this piece of their business. So really glad to hear that, uh, you know, you've done that and, and you're, you're uh, helping other companies do that as well because it's, it's certainly needed, right? I think it helps elevate the entire profession. Absolutely. Uh, somebody I know always says all ships rise with a rising tide. And 
our industry uh, really could use some help. And there's always going to be different levels. You know, I like to look at it like high school league, college league, and the professional league. And, you know, we've decided which league we're, we're in. You know, we're in the pro league. And we're not playing against the college uh, boys and girls or the high school boys and girls. They're, they're playing against each other. And we're only dealing with the pros. And, and it just works well for us. So, so anyway, we ask the, you know, the right needs assessment questions. And, and what we're really doing is gathering information about what's important to you. And then everything ties together. When it is time to do our presentation portion of the sales appointment, we're, we're, we're bringing up the things that were important to you throughout the presentation during the right time in the presentation where it ties in. For an example, if you were concerned about protecting your patio furniture, there's a part of the presentation that we talk about protection of your property and landscaping. And so we're going to then say just, you know, how earlier, Tom, you said that you were concerned about the, the glass table on the back patio. Let me tell you what we're going to do and how we, how we can take that concern away from you. Let's say that when I show up, you, you have a dog that comes to the door and you're like, hey, Rufus, don't jump up on Kyle, you know, and Rufus backs away. Then I'm at the right time in the presentation. I'm going to talk about Rufus. I'm going to say, is he outside, inside, outside dog? What times of the day does he go out back during the, during the fenced in area to go to the bathroom? And we're going to make sure we create a safety plan for Rufus because we know how important Rufus is. You know, our pets are our family. And so we're, we're really paying attention to what the customer says during the needs assessment, but not only what they say, what we see. And then that all ties in. I always say, once you have a process, you don't ever change your process, but you change your strategy throughout the process, which is going to, you know what this is? This is not manipulation because I do not believe in manipulating to make sales. This is customer service, ma'am. And when you give people what's important to them and you show them you listen and you pay attention, they want to buy from you. That's just all there is to it. Yeah, absolutely. Doing doing a proper discovery and and uh, you know being able to uh, accurately you know inform a customer how you're going to help them. I think is uh, I think discovery is the is the phase of, of sales that, that often gets overlooked, but it's it's the most important. Um, so that's great. You know, as we wrap up here, Kyle, I'd love to let people know how can they get in touch with you. You know, if they're interested in learning more about uh, some of the different courses or, or trainings or, or even you know, the blogs that you've done, those type of things, how can they get in touch with you? Sure. So just uh, shoot me an email at Kyle, K-Y-L-E, at Kyle Hoffman, LLC.com. So Kyle, K-Y-L-E, at Kyle, K-Y-L-E, H-O-F-F-M-A-N, L-L-C.com. And I will get the email and reply. We can set up a, a, a call. I, I do um, totally free calls too. And, and I just want to say, if, you, if you're a contractor, out there that that is where i used to be um you're struggling and and you need some help call me and let's talk because i there was people showed up and helped me when i needed help to help me get where i am today and i'd be honored to consider being one of those people for you so i i do want to put out there that i don't just help paying clients i i want to help people that that really need the help as well so feel free to shoot me an email and we can talk and see where it goes. Awesome. I really appreciate that, Kylie. And anything we can do to help elevate the industry, like you said, uh, uh, makes us all better. So I uh, really appreciate the time today. Uh, hopefully uh, people listening took a lot away from this. I know I did. And uh, really appreciate you sharing your story and uh, as well as you know some actionable items that they can take away. Uh, this has been an honor, Tom. I I, I just want to say thank you to you. Thank you to Leap. Uh, you know, we I've been just watching everything that Leap does and what you guys uh, put out for us contractors. It's not just about what you do. Um, you do a whole lot more than what you do. And I'm just proud to be a part of Leap and a strategic business partner with Leap. So I'm just honored to be here and privileged. Thanks. Thank you very much, Tom. No, absolutely. I appreciate those kind words. And, uh, you know, we appreciate you just as much. So thank you. And, uh, you know, thanks again. 
Well, that'll do it for today's show. I truly hope you enjoyed this episode of Leaps and Bounds. If you did, be sure to leave us a five-star rating and review and subscribe to the podcast. We look forward to bringing you more exclusive conversations with some of the most successful home improvement leaders. If you're interested in learning more about Leap, be sure to check us out at leaptodigital.com or follow one of our social channels. Until next time, see you.